Yeah, you read the title right. I'm finally going to be talking about the infamous but surprisingly kind of obscure anti-drug film from 1990 called Cartoon All-Star to the Rescue. I know well and truly I am not the first person to talk about this film, but I know I'm definitely not going to be the last either. So before I get into the film, I think a little bit of background is needed. So as the anti-drug film goes, it was being hyped up in the media whilst production was going on, telling viewers that this is a massive crossover of well-known cartoon characters. Which it is, but the whole film was made for the purpose of it being an anti-drug film, not like Who Framed Roger Rabbit, which was just a film with many different cartoon characters that came out two years before. All the major networks in several different countries, such as the US, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, and Spain, were hyping this thing up and ended up airing in those countries, as well as a few others. But the fascinating thing about this film is, look at how many companies are involved in this thing. Like, look at this shit. It's flashing on the screen. There's so many. Also, one thing that I find really interesting is that Roy E. Disney was an executive producer on this. Yes, Walt Disney's brother was an executive producer for this anti-drug film, and Disney's distribution company, Buena Vista Home Video, was the one that distributed the film. Another big company involved with this is McDonald's and their charity company called the Ronald McDonald Children's Charities as they funded the film. There are other things that I can point out, but I think I'll point out those things whilst we're watching the film. And actually, I hadn't seen this film before I decided to work on this video, so what I decided to do is live stream my first reaction to the film. So those clips will be here and there in this video. But anyways, I'm not wasting any more time, let's just get straight into the film. So the film actually starts with a commercial for the Ronald McDonald Children's Charities, and there isn't really much to say about this, besides the fact that this is extremely 90s. But then we get a title card for the film, and then both George and Barbara Bush talk to the viewer about the anti-drug film and how the cartoon characters will tell you how drugs can ruin your life. Funny thing about this is that each country had their own leaders, prime ministers, presidents, etc. talk about the film before it started. For an example, Bob fucking Hawke and his wife talk about it in the Australian version. If you want to know a little fun fact about Bob Hawke, he holds the world record for chugging a yard glass of beer in 11 seconds, which is about 2.5 pints of beer. To say that he's an Aussie icon is an understatement. After that, we finally get to the film where Corey's brother Michael steals her piggy bank as Papa Smurf somehow sees this. I really can't be bothered questioning the logic on this anti-drug cartoon film, but it doesn't make sense. So now the Smurfs pop up out of the book to try and wake Corey up as the other cartoon characters in her room come alive. And who has Alf in a framed photo? Also, hell yeah, Lorenzo Music's here as Garfield. Definitely not the first time Lorenzo Music has been a part of a PSA as he was the voice of Larry for the Crash Test Dummy PSAs. But I forgot that Elf eats cats, as he threatens Garfield with the fact that he will eat Garfield if he doesn't help. After that, we see Elvin and the Chipmunks come to life out of a vinyl record. Be of service. No but wonder why people want to fucking Alvin? kill the Chipmunks. So eventually all the characters in Corey's room come to life, and eventually wake her up after Muppet Baby's Kermit alarm clock goes off, and Slimer just randomly comes through a wall. So what object is Slimer meant to be? Or is it just actual Slimer, since the rest of them come to life whilst originally being something, such as Garfield as a lamp and Kermit as an alarm clock? Again, I don't know why I'm questioning these things, since the creators of this film probably didn't either. But Corey wakes up as the characters then go off and wander into Michael's room where they hide, and we see that he's stealing his sister's money. Damn, the drugs must have really got to him, as 30 coins is apparently at least $20 worth. Yes, I counted. Maybe down here in Australia, since we have $1 and $2 gold coins, but definitely not in the US. Eventually, Corey walks into Michael's room as he brushes her off, and she tries to question him about what's going on, and apparently Simon knows exactly what drugs Michael's doing. Marijuana. Maybe Simon's the one lighting up on some doobies, since he seems to know exactly what this is. But after that, Michael ends up leaving as the cartoon characters try to put a stop to Michael's drug use, as they all jump out of the window besides Pooh, and also apparently Slimer, since he literally disappears for the rest of the film, until right at the end. We see Michael smoking some doobies at an arcade, as a character called Smoke, Smoke wins. Fatality. Not that smoke, but I wish, as he encourages Michael to keep smoking and eventually encourages him to do crack, as one of his friends offers it to his friend group. I don't know too much about how drug abuse can evolve, but I imagine that people smoking marijuana wouldn't go straight to crack. Like, that seems like just going from one extreme to the other, like this film saying that people apparently do. But as the other friends say yes to trying it, we hear police sirens as Michael and Smoke run away until they're cornered as Smoke leaves him behind. Also, why does Smoke's head randomly become a skull? Is it only when certain situations unfold, or did the animators just think it was cool? Another thing is that I actually quite like the design of Smoke. It really fits the character. But as Michael's shitting bricks, we find out that the cop in question was actually Bugs Bunny. Also, unfortunately, Bugs isn't voiced by Mel Blanc, as he passed away the year before this was released, so Jeff Bergman is voicing both Bugs and Daffy Duck, which we'll have to wait for when he shows up. So Bugs shows up, and this happens after he deals with Smoke. A joint? 
Yeah, like Bugs hasn't done quite a few joints in his time. But Bugs then takes Michael into a time machine that he apparently stole from Wily Coyote, but of course he doesn't say his name, but just says, Borrowed it from some coyote. And Smoke manages to sneak in. Back at home, we see Michael's father as he notices that a few of his beers are missing, and this is another thing about this anti-drug film. It's meant to be about alcohol as well, but <laughs> that's all you see about that. I also love how the beers are all in here in the first shot, then magically disappear in the next, with the box changing shape as well. So right after that, Michael's mother talks to Corey about Michael, asking if she knows anything about what's going on as he's acting strange, and then Pooh decides to talk to Corey, saying that she should have told her mother about what happened earlier. Also in this, Jim Cummings voices both Pooh and Tigger, as apparently this was the third time he had voiced Pooh, and only the second time voicing Tigger. We we'll then see Bugs and Michael going back to when Michael first tried weed, as he tried it for the first time two years ago, and who the fuck talks like this? You guys cruising for lung cancer or what? But we see that the group of people are smoking weed where Michael felt pressure to try it, and of course Bugs says this old saying. If everyone was jumping off a cliff, would you go too? Maybe I will, Bugs. Did you think about that? Also, I don't understand the laws with how the cartoon characters interact with Smoke. Sometimes they can completely interact with him and actually respond to what he's saying, and other times they just completely ignore him like he doesn't exist, or he's like a figment of Michael's imagination. But eventually Bugs grabs Smoke and blows him up with air. Another thing that isn't worth questioning. So then back at home, Corey's gonna tell her dad about what happened earlier between her and Michael, but then decides not to as we then see Michael at the park with a group of friends from earlier where one of them can score some crack for $10. Fuck yeah, me and the homies doing crack in a park? That won't go wrong at all. Also, where's Pee Wee Herman when you need him? So after Michael thinks it's over the top to try crack, Smoke steals Michael's wallet as he passes it to one of his friends in his friend group where she's gonna buy crack. As she has the wallet, Michael runs after her but eventually falls in the sewers to see Michelangelo. Also, this is the only Ninja Turtle we see, as the media was hyping it up as the Ninja Turtles, not Ninja Turtle. So down in the sewer, Mikey confronts Michael about drugs, and like his one to talk. Like Mikey doesn't light up, just listen to how he talks. Also, Mikey is animated strangely, like the original animation studio didn't animate him. Turns out that the people that actually animated this is the Australian division of Hanna-Barbera, called Southern Star Group. Which they're responsible for many different shows, but they're even responsible for Bottle Top Bill and his best friend Corky? I love that show. Maybe it's a topic for another day, so not gonna worry about it now. But as Mikey's talking to Michael, he decides to pull a plug in the sewers where Michael gets sucked down the drain and ends up on a roller coaster where Miss Piggy and Kermit are sitting in the front row. So this is meant to be all inside Michael's mind, as they ride a roller coaster and see that it has a massive drop where Kermit is explaining what the PSA should just be showing. Show don't tell guys, but I guess hey, this is for kids, and I doubt they would have even known what marijuana was until they saw this. But the ride stops where we see that his mind is on autopilot and his brain seems to be breaking down as the Muppet Babies leave him for dead. Well, that's how it looked, but eventually we see that Michael fell down off his skateboard as Michael gains control again where we see Huey, Dewey and Louie from DuckTales standing right in front of him. Now I'm seeing ducks? Oh man, I gotta get off of these drugs. Well, he doesn't do that, buddy. Hey, you might have laced your weed with LSD or something. But the ducks aren't happy when they hear about drugs and decide to show him how to say no by singing a song. Oh, this is what you're all talking about, isn't it? Oh, God. Those drugs are so boring. So after the suffering of listening to that song, Michael wakes up from his drug trip. Yeah, as I said, he was on a full-on fucking drug trip. This is all a drug trip. He was hallucinating his fucking mind out. Like, I don't know how you go on a drug trip with marijuana, but I don't know. He then decides to grab his stash when Corey comes in and he ends up hurting her after Michael grabs her arm. Dad. Ow, you're hurting me. What a fucking asshole. <laughs> marijuana doesn't make you do that, I'll tell you that right now. I have not seen one person smoke marijuana that's ever done anything like that. Hey, thanks live stream me. Literally took the words out of my mouth. But after that, Michael starts to feel guilty about what he did when Alf pulls Michael into his stash. When he's in his stash, Alf does this. 10 point penalty. Who's that? This makes sense that it was animated by a division of Hanna-Barbera, as it really does look like that ghoul at the end of the Hanna-Barbera PSA. But then Alf tries to make it funny. Not Freddy Krueger. This is you. This is not Freddy Krueger. Doesn't look like Freddy Krueger. What, what drugs do you want, Alf? So after that, Alf takes Michael to the man in charge, and who is it? Well, of course, it's Smoke, as he's making Michael's decisions about drugs. Right after that, Corey sees Michael's stash, where Smoke tries to persuade her to try marijuana, and whilst that's happening, Michael has so many near-death experiences and is yet another drug trip. We even get 80s style music whilst this is happening. <laughs> oh, 
but eventually Michael finally runs into Daffy Duck, where Daffy's a fortune teller. Took fucking long enough to see my boy Daffy Duck in this? But as Michael's talking to Daffy, Smoke's trying to persuade Corey to try marijuana as it might make her bond with her brother, and Michael sees himself as a corpse again as apparently that's how he'll end up if he stays on drugs. So then all the cartoon characters come in to really try and nail the message into your head about not doing drugs. What's up, Doc, is your life, if you don't cut it out. There's nothing cool about a fool on drugs. Just believe in yourself. Yeah, you're excellent just the way you are, without drugs. Don't you think that we all get it at this point? Like you haven't said it a hundred times already. But Michael manages to get out of there as he manages to stop Corey before she tries marijuana and gets rid of smoke by throwing him into a dump truck. So after all that, all the cartoon characters go into a poster on Michael's wall, and that begs the question, what the hell happened with all the appliances in Corey's room since they all went into Michael's poster? But hey, there's Slimer. He literally wasn't relevant to the film at all, and then we hear a slower and quote-unquote sadder version of the main song in this film in the credits. But we think about the credits is that the Ronald McDonald Children's Charities ad actually interrupts the credits halfway through. This shit sucks. This shit sucks. But that was Cartoon All-Stars to the Rescue, and it was something. I don't know what to say about it as, yes, it does suck, but I guess the whole point of it is to bring a lot of cartoon characters together to talk about drugs. I guess it succeeds at that, but then again, it's just basically a bunch of old people trying to tell kids how things go and how to avoid drugs. Definitely not the worst thing I've seen, as at least it wasn't offensive. But surprisingly, there's a lot of fan art of people wanting a second Cartoon All-Stars. And of course, it hasn't happened. Anyways, I really hope you all enjoyed this video. And if you did, please make sure to give it a like. If you enjoy my content, make sure to subscribe. You know what to do. And let me know your thoughts on this video down below in the comments. And what kind of stuff I should make in the future. Anyways, let's not waste any time. to get straight into the shoutouts. Massive thanks to Diamond Pony, Madeline Stringer, Ash Crimson, and Miranda S for signing to my pirate tier. Massive thanks to Elliot, Angie Patterson, and Juliet Wakefield for signing up to my $5 pusher tee. Massive thanks to Sam M1994 for signing up to my $10 Peewee Herman tee. And lastly, a huge thanks to Fatima for signing up to my $25 Top Chef tee. If you want to find out you can get your name at the end of my videos, make sure to click the little Patreon link in the description, or check out the YouTube memberships by clicking the join button next to the subscribe button. Anyways, I'll catch you on the next video. Why does Slimer fucking care? He's a ghost.